Imagine a web application that allows users to submit information. The application's framework automatically takes this data and matches it with the appropriate paths of the code. However, attackers might try sending additional data that the application isn't set up to handle. Or basically, the developers didn't anticipate that to happen. What is the impact and consequences? The consequences can be serious. Attacker might use this vulnerability to gain unauthorized access to certain part of the application or even change its behavior entirely. For example, a regular user could use this trick to upgrade to an admin level user with more privileges. I'm talking about mass assignment. It's a security flaw where attackers can send extra data that the application is not prepared to handle. So this can create or modify variables. Most of the time, we see something like role equal admin. We add this variable in the HTTP request, and when we send it, somehow we are the admin. But why is it working? One common feature in frameworks is the ability to automatically connect data from incoming web requests to specific parts of the application code. This makes it easier for developers to work with the data without writing a lot of extra code. So there's an issue with the unintended variables. We can do this by sending data in a way that creates or change variables or objects in the code that the developer didn't intend. Let's have a look at this example code. I'm going to give the link in the description. So here is the code through which you can edit a user's account information. So this is basic HTML form tag. And here is the object that this form is using to bind to. So this is Java and it basically defines user ID, password, email and is admin variables. So when the users send the information, they only send user ID, password and email. But the user doesn't know that there is something like is admin variable that also exists in the backend. Here, the add user endpoint takes the data in the post request and send it to the backend. As you can see, this is how the example post request looked like with user ID, password, and email. But what an attacker can do is they can try to guess that maybe there is some other variable as well. For example, he can set is admin to true. Obviously, this is a guess because most of the time the attacker doesn't have access to the backend code. So by setting is admin to true, there is a possibility that the attacker will gain privileges of the admin. And obviously this variable can vary, it doesn't have to be only admin, it can be any variable which lead to unintended behavior. There are other cases as well where you don't even have to guess the parameters. Basically, you send the request with your username, password or email in a register endpoint. And when you get the response, you can also see something like admin colon false. From the response, you can confirm that the admin parameter does exist. So the next time you register another user, you can simply set the value of admin to true and you will get the admin privileges. Okay, so now let's have a look at the practical demonstration. So here we have the register endpoint and this endpoint takes three parameters, username, password, and email. What I'm going to do is send this request and it says successfully registered login to receive an authentication token. So for that, we have to move to the login endpoint, which is also a post request. And here we have to provide the username and password in order to get an auth token. I'm gonna send this request. And here we can see the authentication token. Now there is a functionality, which is delete user by username. And you can see it's written only admins, meaning only admins have the permission to delete any user by using its username and as you can see here this colon username is basically a path variable and we can provide its value in the value field so that username will be replaced by whatever value we provide over here let's say we want to delete a user named attacker which we just created send this request and it says fail signature expired okay so we have to log in again Seems like the session was expired. Now go back to the delete endpoint and send the request again. And it says only admins may delete users. So we are not allowed to do so. This delete endpoint is also using the authorization token to identify who is admin and who is not admin. 
Now let's go back to the register endpoint and this time we are assuming that there is probably another variable with the name role and with value admin which might give us admin privileges. So here I'm going to type role and provide its value as admin. Send this request and it says a user already exists. Yeah, so I'm gonna type in one in the username. And okay, it says successfully registered. Login to receive an auth token. Let's go back to the login endpoint. Okay, so change the username to attacker1 and send the request. It again says successfully logged in. We are not facing any errors. Now go back to the delete endpoint and try to delete the attacker user. And it again says that only admins are allowed to do so. Okay, so this is the repo that I'm using for demonstration purpose. I'll give the link in the description. Here, click on API views, go to users.py file. And here we can see the backend code. So there are a number of definitions for get user by username or register user or login user. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and there we can see the function to delete user which is basically the delete endpoint. So this is requesting authorization in the header and then is checking if the user is admin or not. If the user is admin then it's going to return a 200 okay then it's going to respond only admins may delete users. Okay so it means that there is something like admin which is being checked in the backend we can see if user.admin. So we have to find a variable that checks if the user is admin or not. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. And here in the register endpoint, we can see something interesting. It says if one and admin in request data, user is possible to define if c slash he wants to be the admin. So if the request data has admin in it, then admin equals true, else false. Means it's checking if there is admin in the request or not. So by default, the admin value is set to false. But we have to find the variable. Okay, here we can see it's requesting username, password and email. And there we can see another parameter that is admin equals admin. Seems like the variable is admin and the value is admin. Okay. So we have to add this in the request in order to get admin privileges. Here I'm going to change the role to admin and then send the request. Okay, log in again to get the auth token. And now move on to the delete endpoint. Let's say attacker1. And it says user deleted successfully. Okay. So this time we didn't get any error. This means that we were successfully able to do mass assignment to be able to do an unauthorized action. There is another endpoint that says retrieve all users. Here we can see all the user email and username. Okay, let's choose any random username from here. the first one that we created that is attacker i'm gonna go back to this endpoint and change the username to attacker and send the request it says user deleted to check if the user is actually deleted or not we can go to this retrieve all user endpoint and check if the user is here or not and it seems like the user was indeed successfully deleted okay guys that's it for today i hope you enjoyed watching this video like and subscribe and thank you for watching.